So this is the understanding how IAM works. Personally, I don't find this diagram super helpful. So I'm gonna whiteboard a totally different way of thinking about this. This may be informationally accurate, but it's not the greatest mental model and it doesn't really cut things down. But you can see here, this is how AWS describes it. Uh, you've got principles firing off requests that go through authorization uh, and then uh, actions to resources. I'm gonna draw this a different way. I'm gonna switch to a whiteboard and you're gonna see my bad handwriting. So let's talk a little bit about what these things actually are. Okay, principles are things that do actions via IAM. All right, so let's just put a user here. We'll go over user guy, user. So human user. But then you can also have a, uh, a process, right? You can have a uh, cloud resource, like an EC2 instance that has an IAM role. You can have IAM credentials that are being used by an application. Uh, anywhere that you are using IAM as a way to grant access versus having like a TCP IP based access to a semi public S3 bucket, that's a principle in AWS policy world. Okay, and, and I mentioned IAM policies aren't like some special magical thing. They're just policies and we're going to talk more about policies and what they mean. Now, does anyone know what the default policy for every single thing in AWS is. Just throw it in the chat. There is a default policy. Yeah, yeah, deny. Yes, the default policy is no. That is the correct way to go. So I'm just going to draw a line between principles and everything else. Let me see if I can, ah, it's straight enough. Okay, so the next thing that I use in my mental model of how to deal with this problem space are actions. Now this is where the train starts to roll down the hill pretty quick, okay? In terms of what you're gonna have to deal with in terms of thinking through this space. All right, so what does AWS mean by actions? Let's take a look at just the EC2 actions. Okay, so, so what I want you to do when you're thinking about AWS policy and IAM, is I want you to forget there are different cloud services. Just stop caring about that for the moment. It's just gonna make you think about this in, in a way that's unhelpful. Devils live in details, those things do matter in the long run. But to have a mental model, the way I want you to think about AWS is just a massive list of actions of all the services combined, okay? so. These are essentially API calls that can be made, right? That's what AWS means by, uh, by actions. So just in EC2, and EC2 is kind of the pathologic example of growth in actions over time. We'll scro start scrolling through here. There's a lot of them, okay? That's EC2 alone. There are hundreds of services now. So the way I think about and encourage you to, uh, to think about AWS policy First is whether a principle can touch a particular action. And for those of you who've been doing a lot of this, this might sound quite remedial, but I think it's really helpful in, in terms of how I think about these things to uh, think through what's really going to happen. So now we've got these lists of actions, right? And there's, there's a lot of these guys. I haven't uh, counted, and I thought about 10 minutes before this, maybe I should have done you know, a script to just count them all up. But I can tell you EC2 alone has, oh, come on computer, around 400, okay? Now what an IAM policy is mostly for, as with most things in AWS, there are all kinds of additional <laughs> uh, edge cases and little uh, kind of uh, hacks and workarounds and so on. Most, and I'm checking time here, we're halfway through, I'm not gonna nearly get through everything, so I'm gonna try to accelerate. What you're doing is you're poking holes in this deny everything, okay? You're poking holes with your IAM policy so that these actions can be accessed, so that you're not getting, and specifically the ones you need, and you're not gonna be denied over here. 